friends, welcome to my workplace for hands-on FICO training at Ranaghat, West Bengal, India. Through this video, we are going to learn management of a hard contract with small people. As you can see, this is a hard contract with grade 5 nuclear sclerosis. The size of the people is about 3.5 millimeter. So, let us observe the surgery from beginning till the end without any addition. The main incision has been made at the posterior aspect of the limbus. You can see I have included some capillaries in the wound so that there is a bit of bleeding. Healing is faster, firmer if we include some capillaries at the wound and chance of infection is also less because the first line of defense is the neutrophils. The neutrophils can reach the site of infection easily if there are some capillaries. By this time the anti-capsule has been stained with tripan blue dye. Since the cataract is hard, I have already decided to use a people expansion device in this case. The antechamber is underfilled some visco has been injected underneath the iris and this is the B hex ring. P hex means Bhattacharji hexagonal. It is a hexagonal people expansion device, device invented by Dr. Sivan Bhattacharji of Kolkata, India. The leading flange goes in and it is stuck the flange at 10 o'clock is now tucked. Alternate flanges go underneath the iris. The flanges with tabs are placed underneath the iris and the flanges, other flanges, other three flanges remain above the iris. It is a uniplanar device. The iris can go above and below the device. So, the iris need not be entangled in the device like Maleviken ring or Gupta ring. And now, capsulorexis is done. Size of the people now is about 5.5 millimeter and I am getting a rexis of 5.5 millimeter going underneath the iris at some places. Since the cataract is hard, I deliberately did this large texas. Hydrodissection is done, small helicots of BSS are injected underneath the anterior capsular rim at multiple points. The anterior surface of the lens is tapped gently and when I can make out that the nucleus has been free from the capsule but in some places it may be attached, I use these two hooks and rotate the nucleus bimanually. Genular stress is much less if we rotate the nucleus bimanually. And now I am going to use my technique the submarine chop for dividing this nucleus into pieces. Some superficial cortical lens matter is removed and now the fecondidal is turned to make the bevel up that is towards the cornea and the tip is buried just in front of the main incision. It goes through the substance of the nucleus towards the opposite equator and as it goes to the opposite equator, the chopper is used to get a nice crack. I do not do a lot of lateral separation there 
just come to the other side, rotate the nucleus on 180 degree and along the initial crack, I separate the nucleus into two heminuclei. Each heminucleus is then subdivided into two pieces. So, the fecundity goes through the heminucleus, stays at some point and it is chopped into fragments. And now each fragment is tilted. The machine being used is Oatly Faros and this is a, a longitudinal ultrasound. There is no torsional component. In such cases, sculpting is tough in such hard cataracts. But with this technique, we can manage the nucleus easily. From the very beginning, the ultrasonic energy is 85 percent in continuous mode, flow rate is 45 ml per minute, vacuum is 450 millimeter of mercury and at this time, the parameters have been reduced. When the last bit of epinucleus is being managed, vacuum around 300 and flow rate 30. And now, there is some amount of cortex, visco is injected and now I go with the Simco cannula, remove some cortex. By this time the bimanual IA is getting ready. And now the sub incisional cortex will be removed by the bimanual irrigation aspiration. I have only one side port. So, I am using the irrigation through the main port. I elevate the anterior wall of the main wound and enough depth of anterior chamber is achieved for removal of the sub incisional cortex. And now we have reached to the point when we can implant the intraocular lens. Visco is used to fill up the anterior chamber as well as the capsular bag. The wound is enlarged little bit. This is because the tip of the cartridge should be beyond the flange which is lying over the iris just in front of the main wound so that the trailing haptic does not get entangled to the dilating device. Yes, it goes beyond this BHEX ring and the nucleus is placed in the capsular bag. And now is the time to remove the BHEX ring some more visco is injected. It's, it's easy to remove the ring. Just hold this flange, pull it centrally, go peripherally and the device comes above the iris, it is just pulled out. And now is the time to clean the visco and there is some pigments released that has to be removed. And this is going behind the intraocular lens and removing visco from the capsular bag. This is very important. Lot of visco remains in the capsular bag. We must go behind the intraocular lens and remove the visco from the capsular bag. Retained visco in the capsular bag may cause raised intraocular pressure in the postoperative period. Now I go with bimanual irrigation aspiration. I want to remove some more visco molecules because it is there. 
sweep along the angle of the anterior chamber. Most of the visco molecules are irrigated out by the irrigation cannula only, using irrigation aspiration for some time. And now, This is a bit of moxifloxacin. Now, very important to hydrate the sideboard. We should hydrate the outer half, the scleral half of the sideboard, not the inner half, that is the corneal half. Now, this is a final lavage of the anterior chamber. I see this is reverse pupillary block. The irrigation force, irrigation fluid causes this block. I do not want the people to be dilated so much, so I lift up the iris and this much size of the people is okay. The very mild sphincter tear at 7 o'clock, it's, it's done. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope this helps.